Welcome to the future. I am a robot. Yes, you're right. I'm not really a robot. I'm a man doing a voiceover for the Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. But uh, tell me, did I trick you? No. Oh. Oh well. Sorry for wasting your time. And here's the Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. Oh eight hundred. The edge. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say the same thing as him? No, you didn't. You just you did a paused. weird pause. Yeah. No one's ever paused in the middle of 0800 The Edge. Because of the what network, mate. I'm a loose cannon. What are you, Dominic Bowden? 0800... <laughs> Sharon? The... Edge. How, how are you a ma- maverick? Text in the 3343 or call us on 0800 The Edge. <laughs> text from the text machine. I'm so maverick, I don't even sleep with the light, the nightlight on. Oh! Out. It's just dark. Wow. <laughs> oh, just darkness. Chang's here. You reckon you're a Maverick, Chang? Yes. This happened last Friday night when we went to the uh, opening on Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. They said don't take photos during the performance. Yeah. I took photos during oh, the performance. Oh, you're loose, Chang. <laughs> That's against the rules. Oh, I yeah. know. And oh, I posted God. it. Ooh. Oh, okay. Sorry. He can have two. <laughs> Why are you a maverick? Oh, I went to McDonald's, man. I ordered a cheeseburger without cheese. Oh! oh! Going to brag about being a badass. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sam. That was pretty good. From one maverick to another, Trey, why are you a maverick? I'm such a maverick. I waited at a pedestrian crossing for the cars to stop, and I didn't even cross the road. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Did you push the button though? Oh no, hell no. Gold. Get out of here, you crazy maverick. Oh, I went to the edge of text of three three four three. Why are you a maverick? From the text machine, I'm a maverick because someone made eye contact with me after I sneezed and I didn't even say it. Bless you. <laughs> I was like, Timmer's hard. <laughs> Shout out to Timmer. Timmer's hard. You know, I'm such a maverick yeah. that sometimes when our show finishes and there's not very many people left in the building mm-hmm. um, and I need to go to the toilet, I'll go and use the ladies' toilets because it's clean. No, that's, that's just weird. It's clean out. That's, You're sick, bro. It makes me feel weird. a little bit... Don't say that out loud. It makes me feel that's, a bit naughty. You don't You've get got a, problems, You don't get a gun mate. for that. That's just weird. Yeah, huh. it's really weird. It's really, really weird. No! Here's a good one from the text machine. I'm so maverick that I bought TGIF... TGIF cupcakes for work, but ants got into them at work, so I swapped them onto a plate and served them. <laughs> this That's kind of gross. This this is gross. Still Maverick, right? We got Grant on the line. Grant, why are you a Maverick? Well, sometimes when I have dessert, I don't use a dessert spoon. I use a different piece of cutlery. Wow! Oh. <laughs> we got our first lady, Maverick. <laughs> Angela, why are you a Maverick? I'm so maverick that I ran out of tissues, so I used my <laughs> instead. You, whoa, whoa, you that, what? whoa, 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 that whoa, sounds whoa. really rude. What did you do, Angela? <laughs> <laughs> Angela, your phone keeps cutting out right when you're about to tell us what you I used. I feel like she's so maverick that the police called in and cut her down because yeah. she's operating in dodgy waters. Oh, God. <laughs> Kirsty, why are you a maverick, you crazy cat? Well, I drove all the way home with my hands at quarter to three instead of ten to two. <laughs> <laughs> you are excellent. You just stop being so crazy down there, Kirsty. Drive to the conditions, That's... please, Kirsty. When they change, reduce your speed. And on 0800 The Edge, we got Harry. Harry, well, I don't know why I called you Harry, but I enjoyed it. Harry, why are you a maverick? Uh, I took a shit in the old lady's dunny and didn't flush. <laughs> What the hell is what the hell is that? It's just gross. <laughs> you killed it, bro. You killed you killed the segment. <laughs> We're gonna stop now because of you. Harry, Harry, that's disgusting. Go go to your room and think about the consequences of your actions, young man. No, go and flush the toilet. No, yeah, that too. And then go to your room. What are you talking about, guys? I'm a maverick. <laughs> you yeah, definitely yes, something, you are. Harry. Have, have a good day. Guys, Sharon and Clint on the edge. It's spring. It is. Well, it's not spring. It's spring on Monday. It's spring. Do you know how I know it's spring today? It's daffodil day. It, it is. is daffodil day. The daffodils are out there blooming all around the streets. It's beautiful. Shares dogs wearing a daffodil today for daffodil day for yep. the Cancer Society. Yep. And cancer is one of those things that, whether we like it or not, we're going to experience in our lives, whether it's someone we love or 
ourselves, I guess. Oh, I'm really sorry to mean to cry. It's okay. Anyway, right. um, I think everybody should get their phones out right now and text Daffodil to 305 and you can make a $3 donation. But I just wanted to... I'm really embarrassed. I'm sorry. It's okay, mate. It's right. um, I wanted to dedicate a song this afternoon because yesterday the world got a little bit less awesome and we lost one of the most amazing people I've ever met who was an incredible husband and the father of the insanely most talented girls and one of my best friends. So I want to dedicate this song to Grant and all the Gilmore family. And I'm sorry for crying. It's okay. No. I was trying not to cry, but <laughs> this song is for you, Grant, and we all love you and we're all going to miss you. And sorry, Gilmore's for crying. We're going to put the details about that Daffodil Day donation up at our um, Facebook page as well because it's important and it is Daffodil Day today. Damn it. You almost I made really, it. really, really did lots yeah. of deep breaths. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. Chang, welcome to the welcome to the studio. Hello. You're here to do your um, highlights of the week. And now, obviously, you're the producer of the show. You're the grandmaster. You're the person who decides what's going down. i got an idea to pitch you right now, Chang Alang. Mm-hmm. Right? Cat Hotel. It's a concept in Japan. We're going to bring it to New Zealand, Okay. Yeah, well, what's in the cat hotel? It's a room. What do you think's in a cat hotel? A I room. Don't know, I'm just, I'm just thinking. Full of cats, and you go in there, mm-hmm. and you just get covered in little cats, and they lick your <laughs> face, and it's so cute. We can do it with the SPCA. We can make it like an adoption drive. And also, here's the thing: mm. we just found out just before Sharon has a fear of cats because her cousin threw a cat at her face when she was ten years old. Mm. So it'll also be a good way for Sharon <laughs> no to get way. over her fear of cats. I'm not going near the cats. I don't think the SPCA would be that happy for us to have a room full of cats. They will Why? love it. Do you, know, do you know what the SPCA is, Chang? What? A room full of cats. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, 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 because it'll be part of their adoption drive, because right now the SPCA, and if you want to adopt a um, cat, by the way, visit your local SPCA. I'm bloody Because I know they have a lot of cat cats hotel. and a lot of strays that need to do it. This is going to work well for everyone. Sharon's going to get her fear of cats cured. Cat the SPCA motel. are going to give out cat some cats. Meow. And we're going to get to touch some little kitties and give them some cuddles and some hugs. It's going to be so cute. So, Chang, can you make the heaven for us, please? I'll just put it on the to be advice list. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's next week. That'll be a highlight for next week's Cream of the Crap. This week's Cream of the Crap has been prepared now by Chang. Check Guys, it out. Sharon and Clint's Cream of the Crap. <laughs> We interrupt this week's cream of the crap to bring you this week's breaking news. There are fears a powerful drug-resistant form of gonorrhea is on its way to New Zealand. Known as the clamp, a case of the so-called sex superbug has been confirmed in an Australian patient. No, the gonorrhea <laughs> crab is coming! I'm so Coming sorry for us all, protect yourself! <laughs> We're going to have to lock ourselves into like a bomb shelter. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I've just had a terrifying thought as well. Doesn't your girlfriend live in Australia? <laughs> Oh, stop now. Oh, no. Oh, oh panic station. Now back to our normal broadcast. Take a seat, please. The doctor will see you shortly. Hi, I'm Guy Williams, qualified WebMD. Guy Williams is not a qualified doctor and has been banned from practicing medicine professionally in New Zealand and the Chatham Islands. Got overheating to the point where I actually passed out. Whoa. Whoa. Um, Ellen, this, is yeah. a, this seems to be something that you should be calling yeah. a real doctor for, not calling the web doctor. Okay, Ellen. I've been to the real doctor and none of them can actually and, put their finger on and it. And now it's time for the worst doctor. <laughs> I've typed in overheating to passing out into WebMD. My yeah. result for you, Alan, is that you are pregnant. <laughs> so, sorry to hear that, mate, and uh, you better tell your loved ones straight no, away. congratulations. Not sorry, this is a joyous occasion. Congratulations, <laughs> sir. Well done, Alan. Also during the week, we're talking about prenups. You never, ever know what's going to happen. Sure, you've got your intention of not breaking up, but it's just good to be protected. We have a verbal one in, in our fam, like in our Wait, marriage. that's not going to go well. No, it's, it's easy. It's, if we break up, he gets the house and I get the dog. That's because... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's come out better in this arrangement than you. <laughs> because he owns more of our house than we do. Yeah, hey, than mate. I do. So that's it. it. But if he cheats on me, then I I'm hope the take value him. of that dog is going up as rapidly as the house is. <laughs> I'm going to take him for all. He's worth if he if he cheats on me. And according to Guy Williams, this was our caller of the week. Quinn, what did someone ruin for you? Finding Nemo. Oh no! <laughs> so how did they ruin Finding Nemo for you? And they just said, "Oh, they found Nemo." <laughs> Did you really think Quinn? Quinn, you're the caller of the day, mate. That's gold. Quinn came on the line, if you guys don't know, threatened. He said he wouldn't come on and say his Finding Nemo one unless we gave him a prize. He's like holding us blackmail. Hey, Quinn, seeing as you've already given us the gold, mate, now we're going to hold out and we're not giving you any prizes. <laughs> yeah, but you should. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all for this week's Cream of the Crap. If you miss anything on our show this week, from Guy Williams interviewing Five Sauce. She looks so perfect standing there in her farmer's bend on underwear. You look so perfect. <laughs>
Derek standing there in my farmer's underwear. Sounds good. Underwear. It's a lot lower than usual, but underwear. You can check it all on our podcast at theedge.co.nz. Guys, Sharon and Clint on the edge. It's life hacks time. I love this. Life hack. <laughs> Entry granted. I love this segment so much, partly for the problems that people solve with them. Partly because it was your idea as well, I bet. Um, like someone, people text in like the most ridiculous things <laughs> they're trying to um, solve, and one of them is life hack. It starts like this. If you are bleeding profusely, like for a start, if you're bleeding profusely, you don't need like a, a cool internet tip to help you out. You need to see a medical professional, okay? Can you just imagine someone who's like gushing out their arm and they're on their computer like... Bleeding, <laughs> or or someone's Lots. someone's bleeding profusely, and someone goes, "Oh, oi, 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 this happened to me." Honestly, try this; it'll sort you right Wait, out. Wax and bacon on it; nothing gets through there. Here, okay, here, here it is. Here it is. Here's the life hack. Before you put a plaster on, you can put turmeric. Am I saying that right? Like yeah. the powder, yeah, turmeric powder on it to seal the cut. Turmeric is an avidiac, a faster healer, healer, and natural cogulant. Okay, I don't think you said any of those words right <laughs> at all. Might Just have. put turmeric on your profuse bleeding. And so we see it hack. work. Life hack. Life not oh, hack. What? No entry permissible. It was, and was one of the words supposed to be aphrodisiac? Because I don't want to encourage no, people no, no, to be no, no, like no, no, no. cutting their arm and putting some turmeric on it and be like, yeah, what's up for a sex at time? No, it's an um, arrow, 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 arrowvidiac. It's a healer. Oh, and okay, um, right. turmeric on your cuts if you're bleeding I was health. bleeding before. Now, now I am I'm ready to go. <laughs> You haven't cleaned up the blood. I'll just Bum, delete chicka, that bang, text bang. to my husband then. Don't worry about the turmeric. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, what is your life hack? Um, I, I'm a teacher, so when I get out of my car at work, sometimes my dress is stuck to my nylon. Mm-hmm. So you spray your nylons down with hairspray, and it makes it all go away so the kids can't see your butt. Oh, that's great. That is a good one. Life hack. <laughs> Entry granted. I am, a, I am a huge fan of any life hack that... Stops kids from seeing your butt. Yes. Very positive. I feel like that could work for any profession, though, not just teaching. Yeah, but you you got to keep the kids away from your butt most 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 professionally. Charlotte, what's your life hack? My life hack has to do with bacon. Oh if yeah. You, if you run it under cold water before you cook it, yeah, it'll actually stop it shrinking for <gasps> for about up to fifty percent. No. What? Get it? Are you serious? I'm serious. I tried it the other day, and I was pretty excited. Do we have a, do we have a best life hack of all time thing that we can play? That is awesome. No, but Great we've got use. this one. Life hack. Entry granted. So that's like free money, right? Bigger, you get more bacon. Yeah, and just way better life choices. Charlotte, hold the line. We're going to hook you up with a prize oh, for that, Jim. Um, I've got a good one. If you're applying for a job, and a lot of people do this, mm. and a lot of people are just graduating uni and going out into the workforce yeah. and sending out a lot of resumes, yeah. this tip that came from an employer was um, uh, make sure you save your resume as your name and then resume and not just the word resume. Mm. Because ah. everyone saves it as resume and just goes into a big file full of ones that called resume. Or save, it, stand out. Or save it as um, Katy Perry nudes. Yeah, oh, that's, a way, better, gonna that's gonna a way better idea. That's a good one. I've got one. Um, if you don't have time to trim your pubes, just get a lighter <laughs> and a can of fly spray. <laughs> no! Light the can of fly spray and run it no. past your pubes real fast. That is, please do not That's try that. It's very good. That Make is... sure you try that home. Life hack. Life not hacked. No entry permission. Oh, come on. Another one coming through on the on the text machine is, if you get sweaty thighs that stick together in the summer, use roll-on deodorant and it'll stop them sticking together. <laughs> that's disgusting. No, that's really good. I don't have a box cap anymore. And I'm all about it. <laughs> I'm going to try that this year. Look it up. Life hack. What if, what entry if, granted. I won't have to do the waddle anymore where I like <laughs> I, I, I put my legs like outside my hips and I walk like yes this is my normal walk check out my box game and I was like why are your legs so far apart shut up bitch you want to like I've got a box game I'll wait 100 the end Ashton what's your life hack um if you want to get bigger biceps without having to go like to the gym or to the park or something yes you just get a tennis ball and <laughs> you, you squish it like every um day or so and then you get big biceps Oh, I thought you were going to say put the tennis ball yeah. inside your T-shirt. Yeah, 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 that will work too. Thank you, Ashton. That's awesome. Life hack. Entry granted. Come on, Haley. What's your life hack? Um. Okay, so I use my hair straightener when I don't have an iron or uh, I don't have time. I've heard this. So this actually, wouldn't that be extremely time consuming or does it work quite well? 
No, it works quite well. I use it when my like pants are too long as well. So if they're too long, I just roll them up and then iron them and then they stay like that. Ah. <laughs> also, um, to hark back to our bacon theme, if you don't have a frying pan, put bacon between your hair straighteners. Oh, yeah, girl. Oh, yum. Wait, 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 wait. I was like asleep. That. That, that's not good. Entry not, granted. That's not for the bacon between the hair straighteners. No, it is, it is, because then it's when you do your hair with the hair straightener, the natural oils from the bacon <laughs> um, work like conditioner. It's Piss perfect off. for streaky Plus, bacon. Plus, it works for pheromones. Watch how many dudes you attract when you smell like bacon. Oh, damn it. I wish I, was, I wish I was still single. I'd just rub some shoulder bacon on my neck every time I went out. Just do it. See, what, oh, see yeah. how Bryce reacts. Yeah, uh, he'll be all over it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rub my entire body with some middle bacon and put some <laughs> streaky bacon, put some Streaky bacon in my bra. Okay, you cross the line. It's gonna there, get mate. freaky in the Casey house tonight. It's already <laughs> getting weird. It's getting, it's getting real weird. Guys, that's what you know what I'm doing on a Friday night. Not all of us are watching Graham Norton. <laughs> you've asked for a lot of um, you've asked for a lot of bacon based life hacks. Here's yes. a couple of other good ones. Good. If you want perfect round eggs to go with your bacon, cut five uh, half a centimeter around each side of the center of the onion and use the outer layer ring. Uh, to crack the egg into the middle oh, of. That's a great idea. That's quite genius. Granted. Um, and Shaz Dog, you had another life hack that I wanted you to share with the group. No, I'm not sure. It's an Uber fact no, life hack crossover. It's an Uber fact. I'm saving it for Uber facts on Tuesday. Are you teasing are it you for s- two days' time? Are you stealing my material? On Tuesday, Sharon's oh. got a life hack that's going into the Uber fact fine, segment. Fine, fine. I'll say it now. Oh, no, this isn't the Uber fact one. This is one I just saw on Twitter. Buy a house or an apartment near a hospital, and your power will always be restored before every Everyone else's. Genius. Excellent. Entry granted. That's awesome. Sky, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the young lion of New Zealand pop music, <laughs> the wonderful, the amazing, Bene Tipane. <laughs> Hello. Lovely to see you. The Prince of Palmerston North has returned. Yes. How are you going? I love your daffodil. It looks lovely on you. Oh, thanks. It was a good day for it. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd get out. It's the right day for having daffodils on your shirt? Daffodil day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) I think everyone's wearing them, so. Yeah, well, I am. Can These I, guys slack. Can I ask you a serious question? <laughs> Go for it. Have you had a haircut since X Factor? Yes, you, I've had one haircut. One was, haircut since X Factor? A month X-Factor. ago, yeah, I had to get um, some split ends taken off. What sort of shampoo so, oh. do you use? Um, oh, it's you get asked this question quite a lot, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, you should uh, know the lush, answer then. It's this lush stuff from that, you know, oh, organic, yeah, organic yeah, yeah. store or something, yeah. Awesome. And with X Factor New Zealand being announced a couple weeks ago, have they tried to wangle you on there to be a judge or anything? Or are um, you going to enter again? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm gonna you might win that round yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I might enter again, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably won't make it through the TV or rounds. No. But nah. Um, nah. I haven't heard anything, but I'm pretty keen to. But do you want to be a judge? Because we know the guy who's putting it together. <laughs> Would you recommend um, to all the young artists out there, would you recommend them going through the X Factor route like you did? Yeah, I mean, if you play your cards right and um, show that you're serious about music and stuff, then why not? Yeah, absolutely. And Fantastic. You, you've done amazing. You've probably been, you, well, you are the most successful person that's come out of X Factor New Zealand. You've gone and done your own thing and you've got a new song out now as well. Does that mean oh. that you've got an album coming out? Soon? Yes, it does. Yep. When it's, is it coming um, out? I uh, can't say just when about. But just it's coming tell out. us, mate. It's coming out pretty soon. Is it because you have no idea? I do have an idea. I just found out today, though. Well, <laughs> oh, exciting. Yeah. Please tell me. Uh, I don't know if I can say that. Can you like, like? Can you like blink the date with Morse code with your eyes? Oh yeah! yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't wait. I'm and right now you're here to do the Benny, the, the guy, no, the Benny Tiffany version of the guy Sharon and Clint yet to be titled cover challenge. Yes, I am indeed. Ha- you, you, the sorry. Jo- the job is you've got to choose a song that's on the Edge playlist. So what song have you chosen? Um, chosen only love can hurt like this by Paloma Faith. Oh, oh yes, oh. yes, this is a great song. Yeah. So, and how, how long have you been learning it for now? I uh, learned it this morning. Okay. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we like. We like it when it's more off the cuff like that. Yeah, we so, were going to take the lyrics to Guy's Back for you, but then yeah, Chang yeah, yeah. wanted a, um, a, a, a page. We've got a thing. stand. We've got a stand. Do you need to clear your throat or anything like that? What do you do before you do a song? <clears throat> yeah, we're good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, doing Paloma Faith's Only Love Can Hurt Like This, the wonderful Benny Tippinay. Thank you. Tell my son it'll mean a thing And what we've got gonna hold on me But when you're not there I just crumble I tell myself that I don't care that much I feel like I could die if I feel your touch But only love, only love 
love can hurt like this. Only love can hurt like this. Must have been a deadly kiss. Only love can hurt like this. Said I wouldn't care if you walked away, but every time you're there, I want you to stay. Even when you come close, I just tremble. And every time, every time you go, it's like enough that cuts right to my soul. But only love, only love can hurt like this. Like this, must have been a deadly kiss. Only love can hurt like this. But it's the sweetest pain, burning hot through my veins. Love is torture, makes me more sure. Wonderful. It was, it was beautiful. It was fantastic. One great Thanks. sign that I um, saw during that performance was that people in the office actually were turning around to hear that beautiful sound. It wasn't a loud song either, but it Normally it they refuse to pay any attention to our show. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Thank yeah. you for that. We appreciate hey, it. <laughs> Cheers. Um, you've got a new album coming out. Can we say what it's called? Uh, yes, it's called uh, Bricks. Yeah, um, yep. that song, your brand new song, Step On Up, is on iTunes today. Yes, it's on iTunes yep. today. Are you ever going to get sick of people announcing your name like the guy did on X Factor? <laughs> no, he did a- Oh, why can't we hear you? Um, come up to this one. Come Sorry, mate, we've stuffed your microphone. He said nah, no. Nah, the guy did a good job. <laughs> okay. Good yeah. save, mate. Good I hope save. they employ him for the next one as well. Ben- oh, that's good. Benny's here to help us with this. Oh, now this won't work either. Oh. I'll do it with my mouth. Cash cannon. 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 Benny, yeah, no, that was good. <laughs> Benny, that was appalling. No, that was good. We thought you would uh, you would help us uh, as an official cash cannon uh, shooter today. Right. Okay. Well, that sounds great. So we're gonna get Rachel on 800 the edge right now. What up, Rachel? Hi. How's it going? Pretty good. Good. Now you get to choose either Guy, myself, or Clint's cannon, and whoever you choose will then give their cannon to Benny, who will shoot it for you. So who do you want to uh, give their cannon to Benny? Uh, Clint. Yes. Oh, okay. This is this hell? is a lot of fun. So take that. See that trigger on the bottom. Yeah. That bottom one. Push that. So gas is up. What now? Yeah. Push it now. Just keep Perfect. going, keep going, keep going. Till it gets to 200. Yeah, there you go. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Now, point it at whatever you want. Point it at Clint's face. At point, it at, point it at Clint, at Guy's face. Point Are it you at, sure? Anything, yeah. anything you want. Shoot me in the chest. Here we go, Rachel. Right, no, 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 the trigger's up top. Let go, the, let go of the gas one. Let go of the gas one. Yeah, and pull that trigger oh, down. All right, yeah. okay, here we go. Here we go, Rachel. Oh! Whoa! You got me. Holy shit. Yeah, so there should be a bit of paper down there. Oh, there's says, a bit of cash left in the cannon. It's a lot of cash. money everywhere. That's a lot of money. It's a, oh, I think, uh, Rachel, you've just won $1,000. Yeah! Congratulations. Woo! And with that $1,000, can I suggest you go straight to iTunes and purchase the new Benny T. Benny single <laughs> called Step On Up. I will. Congratulations, uh, mate. Congratulations. Yay, congrats. Congrats. And thank you, Benny. Woo! We're going to get um, Benny's version of uh, Paloma Faith on our website and up on the Edge TV as well. Cheers, bro. Yeah, boy. See ya. Guys, Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. Who is your celebrity long-term grudge? We have a dude on the line, and this is solid gold. <laughs> Matt. Who's your long-term grudge against? Bloody Chris Keynes. <laughs> what, did, what did bloody old Chris Keynes do to you? 
Oh, well, many years ago, I worked for a Craig Air Cycles, and he came in to buy a how, bike. How many, I, year, how many years ago is this? 20. You've been holding this garage for 20, 20 years. years. <sighs> it's not match fixing involved, is it? <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't like him before even people thought he was cool. I still didn't <laughs> like him then. Okay, what he, did he do? He, he came in to buy this bike, and this was when he was pretty, he was pretty legendary. Yeah. And he had this very, very hot, tall, blonde girl with him, I assume was his girlfriend, unfortunately. Yeah. And... He wanted the bike, and he's been a real dick to her. And then I thought, right, I'm going to get my own back on him. And when he, he goes, right, okay, I'll buy the bike. And I had to fill out a form for his warranty. And I said, oh, what was your name? And he said, don't you know who I am? No! Oh, oh, mate! Oh! Still been cracked up. Yeah. And I, and I said, oh, no, should I? And then the girlfriend goes, oh, it's Chris Keynes. And I said, what was that? And he said, oh, Chris Keynes. And I said, is that Keynes with a C or a K? <laughs> <laughs> I been festering. 20 years. You really do, do still hate him, don't you? Oh, my God. He's, and he looks like a, his hair looks like a Labradoodle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let it all out, Matt. Gold. Thank you, bro. No, that's enough. Do, right. you, do you feel better after that, Matt? <sighs> Actually, I do now. Thank oh, you. Oh, good. Don't no <laughs> worry. It Thanks for calling. <laughs> it's going to be like a cleansing experience. On 0800 The Edge, we've got Danny. Danny, what was your long term grudge? Uh, my long term grudge is against uh, Matthew Ridge. <laughs> Oh, oh, why? What did Matthew Ridge do? Um, it was about like uh, it's a long time ago. So it was about fourteen, fifteen years ago. Hey, Tay, um, these thing, these <laughs> things take a long time to hurt heal. And Matthew Ridge, the other day I saw him wearing a um a puffer j- jacket with no shirt underneath. Yeah, is it anything like that? Because that's pretty bad. Um, no. Nah, okay. Well, I was on a holiday up in Auckland, and we're driving along the motorway, and we'd seen him driving along next to us, and me and my two sisters um. We started waving out to him like we got really excited. We thought it was the coolest thing in the world Aww. to meet, like, see Matthew Ridge. And then, well, like at the age of seven, I knew nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then he just continued driving, looked over at us, and just glared and glared. And then we continued waving, and he pulled the fingers. Oh, oh. big letdown. So and you're not, sad. and you're not letting it go, are you, Danny? I've never let that go for fourteen, fifteen years. <laughs> I can just imagine that the next time that you saw him and you're an adult and you just walk up to him, and be like, "How do you like this finger? How do you like this finger, Matthew?" <laughs> that oh, sounds exactly right. I actually have a grudge. I just remembered with Chris Kens as well. He um, <laughs> he was selling some of his fudge that he did with his dad. That and, was great fudge. And tomorrow back in the day, but yeah. it was super expensive. Yeah. And I really wanted to meet him because I loved the Canterbury cricket team. Went down and I was thirty cents short to buy some fudge yeah. and he wouldn't still he wouldn't just like I had to go find 30 cents he wouldn't give it <laughs> right. to me yeah, for yeah, a 30 right. cent discount yeah, I was yeah, a single yeah, yeah. Fleming girl after that this is why this is why it's coming to get him in the ass alright so sometimes it happens to people who are bad and it's karma this is an interesting one from the text machine way back in the day at the Air New Zealand Awards show Nathan Rarity from Ice TV uh, Live Sport and uh, people might know him from um, Channel Z as well Totally spoiled the main twist to the Sixth Sense movie <laughs> with Bruce, Bruce Willis, the I See Dead People one. Yeah. And they say, majorly gutted, I've hated him. That's a strong word, hated him. And he's also a person you can't hate, <laughs> he's so lovely. We, Ever w- since. we work with him, live sports across the hall from us. He's on the phone with us now. <laughs> NATO, good afternoon. <laughs> Oh my lord, are we still <laughs> going on about that? <laughs> so have you heard about this? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, it wasn't the uh, it wasn't the Air New Zealand Awards, it was actually the Ice TV actual awards. <laughs> oh. I, got so sick, I got so sick of everything having a bloody award, I went, right, well, this will be the actual best movie, the actual best song, and that there. Yeah. And I've been to it, but it, it was really weird, cause, you know, they had, they had twist at the end, but... I actually, uh, mine was from out of frustration because when I'm sitting watching the, you've all seen the film, eh? No, yeah. don't give it away. <laughs> <laughs> In the first scene. Bruce Willis dies. <laughs> right? He dies in the first scene. So they give you the spoiler alert at the beginning. Nathan, well, you... that was the thing, but I, I figured out, because I think it, that was at a time when, when Tarantino and all that had started making films. Mate, so they no, one wants to hear you, all the time. no one wants to hear you rabbiting on. That's you've my just, reasoning. You've just spoilt it for a whole new generation of fans <laughs> who are going to hate you for another 20 years, mate. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Was Bruce Willis dead in that movie? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Rarity, right now we need you on the air to apologise to everyone from 20 years ago who that movie you spoilt for. Suck it! <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Rarity, 
Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> Let's take some more of these before we wrap it up. Amber, we have had your one come through quite a few times. i got to say, girl, I am on your team with this one. Who is your long-term judge? Grudge. Grudge. I, Grudge. I hate Angelina Jolie. Yes, and why do we hate her? Did Amber? you meet her? Why do we hate she her? She stole Brad off Jen. <laughs> Jen's fan and she stole him. Let no. it go. They're married now. They've got like 20 kids. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Once a, wife, once a husband stealer, always a husband stealer. Am I right, yeah. Amber? You should hate, you should yeah, hate Brad. Man. You should hate Brad, Brad Pitt for leaving Jen. We hate Brad Pitt as well, don't we, Amber? <laughs> Yeah, but it's a girl code. You can't take someone else. <laughs> okay, okay. Bury mm-hmm. the hatchet, mate. I'm with you. Team Anderson all day. Hold the line. You're getting a prize. <laughs> Oh, got another cool. Sorry, I get really angry. <laughs> Karan, who's your long-term grudge? Hi. Um, uh, when I was nine, I actually went to a laundromat with a family friend, and I sat there and I saw Savage walk through the door. Oh, wait, 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 wait. hang on a second. Were you in his? Uh, <laughs> were you were you in a swing video? Yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> okay, maybe he was just scoping out locations for it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was mine, so I don't think he when would he have wa- wanted it. When he girl. walked in, did you give it up for Savage? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> okay, this might be why um, then. What happened? I went up to him and I said, oh my God, you're Savage, and everyone knew that it was Savage, and I I was flabbergasted. I had the first person I'd met that was famous, Yeah. and I went up to him and I said, are you Savage? And he goes, no. <laughs> and then and then drove off and it made me really sad because it was the first famous person I'd ever met and oh. he, dro- oh. he drove off in a four wheel drive with the number plate Savage and he was like it's not me <laughs> see you later yeah he said it's not me I've just yeah. got to go let my herb swing all right there you go a lot, <laughs> it was really good yeah, a we lot of some hatchets oh. a lot of tension released on the show a lot of hatchets buried this afternoon I feel um, and from now on uh, if you're out there celebrities beware because people are holding grudges for a lot longer than you realise. And Johan and Chester from Lincoln Park, I'll <laughs> never forgive you for making me cry. In Next. my first solo interview, I'll hate you until the day I die. Bye, Sharon and Clint. Itch. Breaking news, guys. From the uh, breaking news desk of news, we have a... Uh, <laughs> An amazing clip that's come to us via the internet, mm. based from the Paul Henry show last night. Okay, is this the one of Bella Henry um, talking about politics? Oh, yeah, because that's two days old. Yeah, yeah. not it's, yesterday, the night before. It's still gold. If you haven't heard this before, it's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. It's Paul Henry's daughter. It's also the person who um, the um, celebrity pages said you were dating. Yeah, I was. <laughs> is, this, is, this, is this who you lost your virginity to? I lo- no, no, well, there's, there's a bit full on. <laughs> Bella, I love you, but oh, this no, is I've funny. I've still got that. This is very funny. <laughs> okay. She, it's her opinions on politics. They asked her about I, whale oil. Yeah, can I just say, it got posted up a lot. I saw a lot of haters posting up like, oh, God, this is the future of our country. We're screwed. That sort of thing. I don't look at it like that. Like, she doesn't know what's going on at all in this. But she just represents the majority of youth in New Zealand who are um, sort of not interested in what's going on yeah. and don't give a crap about who whale oil is. You know? Yeah, I, I honestly, if I didn't work in this job, probably wouldn't know who he was. He, I still don't even really know who he is. He's a, um, he's a blogger who has quite a successful kind of like right wing, quite extreme. Kind of right wing. Um, <laughs> quite extreme blog. Yeah. Um, so that's his pseudonym. His real name's Cameron Slater, but he goes by the name Whale Oil. Yeah. Is it because he... Does he? No, no. He, no. Get, he gets asked. He, he does look a bit like a whale, and he is quite like greasy. A, 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 yeah. But um, but uh, judge for yourself. This is Bella's take on the man whale oil. What about whale oil? I don't know what we use whale oil for. I don't know if it's the actual whale being killed for the whale oil, or if it's just oil in the sea that whales are around. But yeah, um, you know, don't kill whales. But then, you know, we need our oil, so it's kind of just like, don't kill the whales. But if it's the oil in the water, you know, scooch the whales over a little bit. (laughs) But if it's actual whales, then I think we can find some other oil. (laughs) Scooch the whales over a little bit. And it had a good message as well. Don't kill whales. Yes. But if we need the oil, scooch them over. If it's there. Get the whale oil. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think she's cute and That is that adorable It's poor Henry's daughter's take on politics Guy, Sharon and Clint On the edge Welcome to the brand new feature 
Pony tales. Tales about ponies. Tales about pony tales. Tales about things that involve the word pony. Yeah, pony rides. Could be anything like that. Pony tales. It's actually a surprisingly successful segment. The bar formerly run by Brooke Howard Smith from downtown Auckland, <laughs> Pony Bar. They all, they all count. You got a yeah. tale from there. That'd Shivers. be bleak. I've got a lot of tales. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got a tale from that bar. Uh, Brad, that used to do the night show, and our friend Noel and I, we used to go there and get lots of crate beers and then uh, say that they were on Brooks' tab. And we did that until <laughs> we, we did that until he rang Brad one day and he goes, did you put $500 of crate beer on my account on the weekend? <laughs> so 0800 The Edge, what are your pony tales? Catherine, tell us your pony tale. I have two pony tales. Oh! So... My first one is that I had a pony. Oh, um, yeah, that, who, that counts. So we had to call the fire engine because she fell in the ditch and she was too fat to get out. <laughs> that is a good ponytail. Yeah, Excellent. that gets this. She also escaped and ran down the middle of, like, a main road. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, peak hour traffic. Okay. <laughs> and it, it actually made the radio. Oh, wow. And, um... All the tow trucks. And we don't just put anything on the radio. <laughs> no. So all the tow trucks in the area had to come and, like, block off the road and, like, catch the horse. Okay, okay. worth this as well. <laughs> yep. Is that two ponytails or is that two parts of the first no, that's, ponytail? That's one. Okay. That's one. All right, second so ponytail. Second one, yeah. Second one is that it's a kind of a shout-out to my friend Benny Anthony, mm-hmm. who played basketball um, professionally back in the day. Mm-hmm. Oh, girl. And he was sponsored by Pony. Oh, Two Catherine, ponytails. Catherine, hold the line. Yeah. Hold the line because you've just you're getting a prize. Yeah. You've just nailed ponytails. The, the ponytails I are something else. flooding. Oh, Jesus something Christ! Else. Okay, no. yeah, go. No, it's not a ponytail, but Guy Williams. Yeah. Um, actually, asked me out on a date <gasps> at the um, NRL nine. Ah! <laughs> oh wow! I do. I remember doing that. Hey, nice to see you again. And you turned me down. I did. Oh. Well, uh, have you, have well, this is awkward. Did you just ring up to rub it in his face? Have you turned it round? <laughs> uh, not yet, guy. <laughs> why, why did you say no? Why did you say no? Um, I think he was a little bit intimidating. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. that is, well, I don't want to be intimidating. Yeah. So sorry about that. Maybe another time, babes. I'll always love you. I love you too, guy. Okay, this is cute. <laughs> no, you don't. Oh, God. <laughs> Get your own love line, mate. And Leanne, what's your ponytail? Oh, my tail is that my pony didn't have a tail. So um, it was such a it was such a pitiful tail that every time we took him to a show, we had to pin a pin a fake one on him. Oh, and, um, the, the, the fake tail we had to get made in Australia, and every time we took him to a show, we'd have to wash it and brush it and put it in a special bag and pin it on him. Oh man, that is amazing! Oh, it was gold. It's a great ponytail. That, yeah, that's good yeah, too. I've probably got lots of ponytails, but that's the only one that springs to mind of significance. Hey, that. Can- Concludes Thank our so first much, ever edition of Ponytails. Thank you to everybody can, who contributed. We've got so many good texts and stuff. We could do this again next week. Should we? Should we bring Ponytails, ponytails back? <laughs> Redux. Yeah. Guy Sharon and Clint's Edge. Time for uh, a block update. All the latest news from the hit show, the block. All the latest gossip, rumors, um, speculation, progress, uh, news mm. coming live. From our block expert, Clinton Roberts. Can you please refer to me as a blockaholic? Clinton, your resident blockaholic. You've been watching all the four episodes so seen, far. Seen them all, mate. Seen them all. Let's hear your update, mate. Na, 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 na. Okay, it's been four days of the block. My question for you, Clint, is uh, they've been doing challenges. Have they started building the houses yet? Four episodes? No. That was an excellent block update. Thank you very much, Clinton. Really appreciate it, bro. Can Keep we, on watching. Definitely worth it. Can we have the song one more time? Na, 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 na. You should have said no. Guy Sharon and Clint. Itch. Thank you for listening to the show. We are so grateful that you have listened to the show uh, that we have given you the ultimate prize. Um, a podcast extra. Oh, do you mean a podcast extra? And today's um, podcast extra is um, a, don't do a, that with scissors so close to your face, a please. Solo, a That's solo, job. a solo musical performance from Shaz Dog Casey. Ooh. I feel like she did a lot of singing on today's show. <laughs> it's some more. I don't do any singing on today's show. You don't even. You see, you sing so much now. You don't even know that you're singing. You oh. sung so much stuff today. <laughs> Maybe I was, it was just all singing beautiful. Songs. You were singing um, a lovely bunch of coconuts before. Could you sing that for us again? 
I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts twiddly dee Here they all are standing in a row. Dum, 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 this is your gift. Big one, small one, some as big as your head. And is it a they gift? All go is marching. it a punishment? I'm not sure. Oh, you've changed songs now. <laughs> you've gone to the ends, go marching two by two. I didn't tell anyone. Yeah, that's my remix. We didn't promise God. anyone that it was going to be a, a, a good song, I you dickhead. That, I thought that people. <laughs> you're I, a dickhead. I thought hey. people, you would get it, Clint, because you're DJ Clint and you'd understand a remix. We've had a good show, Clint. Don't you bring your negative attitude in here and ruin the show Mate, for everybody. Don't. Um, I think we all know that players, they're going to play, and haters, they're going to hate. So you're singing again. Ballers, they're gonna ball. Thanks for listening to the show, everybody. Goodbye. Shot See you guys. Ballers, they're gonna call. They ain't got nothing to do. Today's Guy, Sharon, and Clint podcast is brought to you by Grass. Perfect for gardens and sport. Get Grass today from your friendly Grass vendor.